The M1D sniper rifle has become a favorite collectible firearm. Unfortunately, because of its simplified construction, a great many fakes have been made and passed off as originals. During our research for collecting the American sniper rifle 1945 to 2000, we examined more than 80 M1Ds in private collections in museums. Of that number, 37 were outright fakes or had reproduction parts added to make them appear to be original. Nine of these were in museums, to the surprise of their staffs. All the information you need to authenticate a true M1D sniper rifle, which you own or intend to buy, can be found in Collecting the American Sniper Rifle 1945-2000, to published by North Cape Publications, Incorporated. During World War II, the Ordnance Department developed and produced two sniper rifles for the U.S. Army, the Model 1903A4 and the M1C. The M1D was also developed in 1944 as a quicker and less expensive alternative to the M1C, but with the end of the war in sight, it was placed on the back burner. Requests from the U.S. military during the Korean War revived the M1D concept. The Springfield Armory geared up to produce the M1D sniper rifle, but it was not in production by the time the Korean armistice ended the fighting. The M1D went on to serve in many of the brush fire conflicts the United States was engaged in during the Cold War, as well as in Vietnam, Grenada, and Panama. It was also used by our allies, Italy, Greece, Denmark, the Philippines, South Korea, and South Vietnam, and by the Israeli Defense Forces in three of their major wars. There are seven parts that identify an original M1D from a reproduction, or to call it what they really are, fake M1Ds. Unfortunately, these seven parts have been widely counterfeited since the 1960s. Because of its simple construction, unscrupulous individuals have found it easy to fake an M1D sniper rifle. So how do you know that the M1D that you are intending to buy or already own is original? Identifying the fake parts is the key. The seven parts you must examine carefully are barrel, base, mount, rear handguard, telescopic sight, flash hider, and cheek pad. All M1D barrels were turned down at the breech end to one inch in diameter to accept the base. With basic machining skills, any M1 Garand barrel can be removed from the receiver and machined on a lathe and a reproduction base slipped on. But all original M1D barrels were manufactured at the Springfield Armory and were marked with the drawing number D7312555. Before November 1952, the drawing number was on the top of the barrel. After, the marking was on the right side, invisible when the operating rod was drawn back. If it does not have this drawing number, the barrel on an M1D is a fake. The base was slip fitted on the breech end of the barrel, then pinned in place. The pin was staked with four strikes of a square faced punch to prevent it from backing out. But the base has been counterfeited for many years, so be careful. The mount holds the telescopic sight in a bracket and attaches to the base with a thumb screw. The mount has also been faked for four decades, often by the same companies that faked the base. There are several ways to identify a fake mount. All original mounts were cast and finished smoothly. Most reproduction mounts have a rough surface, especially near the hinges. The original mount has a spring-loaded pin that presses against the base for stability. In most reproduction mounts, this pin is absent or is not spring-loaded. The end of the fake pin is usually battered or filed off-center. Most clamp screws in reproduction mounts are metric and not American standard. Both the original base and mount were given a very smooth coat of gray parkerizing. Several other of the many ways to identify reproduction bases and mounts are detailed in our book, Collecting the American Sniper Rifle, 1945 to 2000. Three telescopic sights were installed on the M1D. The first was the M82. 
It was used on early Springfield Armory production M1Ds. Most were soon replaced by the M84 telescopic sight, which became the standard issue as production progressed. A third telescopic sight, the Weaver K4-60B, was installed on some Marine Corps M1Ds and on many National Guard M1Ds. No documentation has yet been discovered that shows that the Weaver K4s were an official government purchase, but military units since the late 1960s have purchased small quantities of non-official items for special uses. An M1D with the Weaver K460B scope marked MC1474 is in the Marine Corps Museum at Quantico, Virginia. The M84 is a sturdy 2.2 power telescopic sight with box-like covers over the windage and elevation adjustment knobs, a sun shield that slides over the objective lens, and a rubber eye cup to shut out extraneous daylight. The collector should be very careful as reproduction M84 scopes appeared on the market several years ago. Attached to the left side of the elevation housing is an aluminum plate. The marking on the plate reads telescope over M84 over a serial number of up to five digits. The plates were attached with slotted screws and the serial number was embossed separately and enclosed within a box. The letters and numbers were filled with white paint. Quite good reproductions of both the M82 and M84 scopes appeared on the market several years ago. They are made by a factory in China and sold by a number of companies. The serial number on the marking plate is usually five zeros, but unscrupulous sellers have added other serial numbers to make them more realistic. Our book, Collecting the American Sniper Rifle 1945-2000, to provides detailed information on how to tell which scopes are non-military reproductions. The handguard for the M1D had to be shortened because the base for the telescopic sight bracket was fitted on the barrel ahead of the breech. A standard infantry rifle handguard can also be shortened by cutting it down at the leading edge of the band. The M1D base is relieved at the forward end to receive the rear lip of the short M1D handguard. If the lip on the handguard is absent or crudely cut, then it is a fake. Both surplus original and reproduction short handguards are relatively easy to obtain from internet sellers. Two different flash hiders were issued with the M1D. The original was the M2 flash hider, which was cone-shaped and attached to the barrel and bayonet mount on the gas cylinder. From 1958 on, it was superseded by the T37 flash hider, in which the cone was replaced with finger-like projections. Both flash hiders have been reproduced for commercial sale. The earliest M2s were manufactured by the Springfield Armory and are so marked. Later versions were manufactured by Hart Manufacturing Company and again are marked with their name. The T-37 was stamped with a Defense Eagle cartouche and white ink, which rapidly rubbed off. Reproduction flash hiders can be difficult to tell from the originals. Look for the proper markings on the M2 and careful machining on the prongs of the T-37. The correct designation for the cheek pad used on the M1D and other U.S. sniper rifles is T4 cheek piece. It was attached to the buttstock with leather laces and two brass screws to position the side of the shooter's cheek in the proper position to use the telescopic sight. Other T4 cheek pieces were first mounted on the M1C sniper rifle. These early cheek pieces were made by the K-Line Corporation and marked with the K-Line logotype only. Those mounted on the M1D were marked on the right side with the letters MRT, meaning mildew resistant treatment, and the month and year. In this example, MRT over 252 for February 1952. Cheek pieces that are unmarked or incorrectly marked in the wrong type of letters and numbers are reproductions. M1Ds were sold through the original and current civilian marksmanship programs, but you should not depend on papers from either organization to prove authenticity. In this day and age of copy machines, scanners, and laser printers, they are too easily faked. 
Use a strong magnifying glass and look for evidence of laser or bubble jet printing in letterhead and other areas that would have been printed on a commercial ink printing press. A small number of M1Ds were sold by commercial dealers when returned from allied and friendly nations. All such M1Ds should be checked for foreign made parts. These are just a few of the ways you can detect fake parts on the M1D sniper rifle. Our book Collecting the American Sniper Rifle 1945 to 2000 provides far greater detail than we can show in this short video. It covers stocks, handguards, receiver and barrel markings, the telescopic sights, and the M1D accessories including cleaning kits, tools, carrying cases, weapons cases, spotting scopes and binoculars issued to snipers. The book also provides the same information on all other U.S. military sniper rifles in service after 1945, such as the Marines M21, M25, and M40 series, the Army's M24 sniper weapon system, and the Special Operations Command M86 and M89 sniper rifles. As a bonus feature, a special appendix describes the U.S. Army's M2 carbine equipped with the M3 infrared sniper scope used during the Korean War. Now why would you pay thousands of dollars for a fake M1D sniper rifle? The price of the book is only $24.95 plus postage. It's available from North Cake Publications Incorporated, Amazon.com, and booksellers at many gun shows in the U.S. and Canada. Order from North Cape Publications Incorporated and receive a 15% discount. Use the code SN45 when ordering by phone, email, or through the website.